In the last video, someone asked me to test this Asetek 645 LT in the MI6 case. I tried to mount it with the toll offs, but it would not work. I positioned the radiator all the way to the front, then all the way to the back, but either the 90 degree angle fitting was blocked by the frame, or the rat itself was too big, and the case mounting hole would not line up. I tried with both normal and slim 92mm fans for push config, but they could not solve the issues. So the best for this case would be the 120mm radiator. This is probably the shortest SATA power cable you have seen. It is done, and I am very satisfied with it. I try measuring the toll loft and the length is 20.2 centimeters, the width is 13.5 centimeters, and height is 6.3 centimeters, making it around 1.7 liters. Adding with the case original volume, which is 6.7 liters, it came out of total to be 8.4 liters. For me, under 10 liter cases should be considered portable. Now let's take a look at the interior. The cooler I use is the Corsair H60. Due to the lack of manual for the tow loft, I had to install the AIO 4 times to get it into the correct position without kinking the tube. The radiator had to be installed close to the front, but not all the way, otherwise it would block the tow loft screws and prevent me from accessing them. By doing that, the back of the tow loft has some extra space. And I think I can use it to install a short RGB strip if I want to. 
For the tubes of the cooler, I ran them like this and made some basic cable management to keep some cables hidden as best as I could. Everything turned out great, but the light of the X60 is pretty bright, so it's a bit annoying for my left eye, and this coming from me, an RGB addict. And here I added the extra hard drive as planned. It's unnecessary, but I had left the drive without using for ages, and I don't want to waste it. In my opinion, my cable management is pretty good, despite jamming quite a lot of hardware into this small case. But people might disagree. Let me know what you guys think. Now let's go to the performance. I set the Ryzen 7 3700X to 4 GHz by using 1.16 volts. To test stability, I first try with Prime 95. Temperature jumped to 97 degrees Celsius within 5 minutes. So I stop and switch to something less aggressive. With IDA 64 ran for 3 hours, CPU average around 72 degrees and max at 74. I also try rendering the first 6 minutes of this video with Adobe Premiere, 4K 60fps high bitrate software encoder. Temperature average around 70 and max at 73. The task completed in 15 minutes and the editing process felt just as good as my 9900K system. For gaming, I undervolted the RTX 2070 by making it run at 1965MHz at 925mV. And thanks to the top and bottom exhaust fans, the temperature was very good and the performance was great at 1080p, especially with Metro Exodus having graphic and ray tracing both set to high. I have around 90 to 100 FPS in game. And here is how my system sounds like. I emailed Fred Cook, the creator of the case, about my build in the last video and told him that many people were still interested in the case, but he confirmed me that this case was permanently terminated due to the highly cost production. But I think his decision is totally correct. Because of the price, there's no way this case can be competitive against other more popular cases. Without a toe loft, my MS6 would cost $215. Let's first compare this case with a Dan A4, which costs around $200. In the same configuration, the Dan A4 can still support a 120mm AIO with a short graphic card. CPU coolers that can be used in the MI6 are some air coolers like the Noctua L12 or L12S. If user goes with an Aztec 645LT for the DAN, the MI6 will pretty much lose in terms of graphic card power, as an RTX 2080 Ti can easily fit in the DAN. With a toll loft, which cost me another extra $75, we compare this case with the Ghost S1 plus a large top hat. This makes the Ghost $30 to $40 more expensive than the MI6, but the Ghost would destroy the MI6 in terms of CPU and GPU power with a 240mm AIO and an RTX 2080 Ti. The MI6 also has limited support for water coolers that can be used, which makes the battle even more unfair. These three cases I just mentioned are less than 11 liters in volume, and they are smaller than the N case M1. If I bring the $200 M1 in here, the MI6 would be totally annihilated in both price and performance. So I think the idea of ending production for the MI6 does make sense, even though this case is a very unique case. It's very unfortunate because Fred was very helpful and informative during the production. So if he plans to come back with a new case, I hope he would name it MI7 because I would like to have a Johnny English build. This is so sad. Despacito. Play Alexa.
Dear Fred, can we have some F F F F F F F F F F F F F F F F F F in the chat? Before ending the video, based on the song that is playing, can you guess what case that I will build in next? Let me know in the comment. Bye bye.